So hey, good evening everybody. It is April the 8th and I am speaking about supplements this evening. And the question is to supplement or not to supplement? That is the question, to misquote Shakespeare. This is something that has gone on for decades, this question of supplements or don't take supplements. And I myself took many supplements um, in my lifetime. I've taken many, many supplements. Um, I remember having a basket on top of our refrigerator, which was full of supplements, different vitamins and minerals and multiminerals and trace elements. And I studiously studied the Vitamin Bible by a man called Earl Mandel. In fact, I actually went to listen to him speak when he came to speak in KwaZulu Natal. Um, I think my children, my youngest my middle daughter was about three or four years old, and she is now going to be turning 40. So that was a long time ago. I've been really, very consciously trying to be healthy for many, many years. I grew up in a family where my mother had a medical encyclopedia that I poured over and looked at all the gory details of people with big, enlarged goiter thyroids and huge problems, um, gory pictures of wounds and skin rashes. And I could barely look at them. I used to look at them through my fingers. And I think subconsciously what, I ingrained, what was ingrained in me at such a young age was this deep desire to be so healthy that I never got any of these freaky diseases these people had in this book. I didn't want to have a goiter problem. I didn't want to have rashes and oozing wounds and athlete's foot and all these awful things that they were showing me in this book. And so I set out to try and find my way as far as health went. And it started off with things like, you know, I'm going to eat whole wheat bread instead of brown bread because my mother gave us brown. We had a choice of brown or, or whole wheat. Um, whole wheat was kind of quite novel and you had to really look for it and find it. Um, we ate butter and didn't eat things like margarine. We drank water and didn't have juice in our house. Um, you know, things like Coca-Cola was just something that never appeared in our house ever as I was growing up as a child. We weren't even allowed to chew gum. My mother believed that chewing gum made people stupid. She said, all you need to do is look at people chewing gum and you can see that they're stupid. And she'd do this with this real dumb look on her face. Needless to say, we used to hide under our beds or go to a friend's house and chew gum because, you know, it was being very rebellious. But even, you know, even in those days, it was a... I, you know, even then, I got so busted for chewing gum. I fell asleep with it in my mouth, and it came out. And in the heat of my head, this chewing gum got stuck to the pillowcase, and somewhere in this whole mess, the pillow ripped open, and all the feathers came out and stuck to my head. So my father knew straight away that I had been chewing gum. So I knew that it was just like I had this sixth sense that if I – ate the wrong things, I was going to get bad, busted. I was going to get sick. Something was going to go wrong. And I grew up having, you know, diagnosed with bipolar, had allergies and hay fever, and kept trying to do the right thing. I'd make my own yogurt, not knowing, realizing that dairy products was actually one of the main causes of allergies and hay fever um, and cellulite and a whole lot of other things. And so I started taking, not only making my own yogurt and eating whole wheat bread, I was eating uncolored cheeses, and I started taking all the right vitamins that Dr. Earl Mandel told me to take and give my children. But nothing changed. In fact, things got a lot worse. And so I continued to look for better supplements, better quality ones, better companies. I got special vitamin supplements from the homeopath and the naturopath. Nothing improved. The allergies and the hay fever were there. My children still had ear infections, tonsillitis, and runny noses. The homeopath at one stage said, maybe you should try taking dairy products out of your diet and your children's diet. And this was my middle daughter who was in two and had allergic rhinitis. Her nose would not stop running. And in fact, it ran so badly that she had this stream of mucus that would actually eat into her nostrils and it would bleed. And so my first response was, well, if she's not going to have her milk and her cheese and her yogurt, where is she going to get her calcium from? And he said, well, from cauliflower. 
I think it's only white vegetable you could think of, I surprised he didn't say potatoes. And I thought, went home kind of quite depressed, like, how much cauliflower am I going to get into my two-year-old daughter? Not only does it not look great, it's like pale and no color, doesn't taste great, you've got to smother it in cheese to make it taste decent. Plus it had a weird name, so we started, I started renaming them broccoli and cauliflower, such weird words for kids, they almost... They almost make you not like them, those words. So I call them little white trees or little green trees, and then they would eat them. So, you know, that was, it was years later that I discovered that there was way more calcium in the little green trees and in all dark green leafy vegetables than there ever would have been in the cauliflower. And it, that is how my journey started, was this journey of discovery. And I'm still on a journey, still, I'm still learning. Um, I just learned something putting this, talk together as well. I thought, okay, I know this and I know this and then I'm going to teach you, I'm going to tell you about one of the things tonight as well. Um, anyway, so here I was trying to find my way, felt like in a haze, like I had blinkers over my eyes. Anybody I spoke to, whether it was doctor or the homeopath or naturopath, really didn't have solutions. They had things for me to take. It was either drops or little pills from the homeopath or vitamin supplements from the naturopath or antibiotics and then I remember saying to the doctor if my daughter is now on the third dose of antibiotics I read in Adele Davis's book that children should have or adults should have an, an, a vitamin supplement if they're taking an antibiotic oh good idea he said and promptly wrote out a script for a vitamin syrup to give my daughter little realizing that her allergic rhinitis was not only from the dairy product but from the preservative in a juice that she was being given at school and the very same preservative that was causing this tight chest and this allergic rhinitis was the same preservative that was in the vitamin syrup that the doctor had prescribed. When I found this, we're talking in an era where there was no internet. I couldn't Google what does sodium benzoate do to the body. It was really difficult to find out information. I would have to go into libraries and couldn't find them. Then I found a book um, Additives, E for additives, um, but that came out years later, but it was just, I looked up uh, this preservative in books in libraries. I mean, it was a long process. I couldn't just haul out my cell phone and just say side effects of sodium benzoate. In the meantime, I was loading her up on vitamin syrup and vitamin supplements, and then I found out it was in the syrup, and I was mad as all hell. I thought, like, the doctor told me, and he should know better. And I began to realize, and I miss, I have so many doctor friends, I really do, people in the medical profession. And they said, Marianne, we don't study actual health. We're not doctors of health, we're doctors of medicine. That's why it says MD, medical doctor, means doctor of medicine. We study how to treat symptoms with medicine and how to treat them with surgery. So that's all very well, I thought, but... Who am I going to go to to get answers? I read Adele Davis who said, give your children cod liver oil. And then we'd all want to puke afterwards because cod liver oil had been processed and heated and was completely rancid and it's actually quite dangerous to the liver. So it really was a case of like really just being curious and finding out for myself, going to myself, going to the uh, medical archives at the Vitz Medical Library in Johannesburg. I remember going there. I remember going to the Medical Research Institute and speaking to Dr. Norman, uh, Dr. Norman Walker there. Um, and just this ongoing, not Dr. Norman, I don't, I'm trying to think, I think it was Norman. Anyway, Dr. Walker. ARP Walker, that was his name. He, I didn't know his first name, just I know that his initials were ARP Walker. And he was then in his 80s, and then he would take some milk out of the fridge alongside the little stool samples of the people that he'd just gone into the rural communities and got them to just defecate behind a bush in a bottle. And he would come and put them in his refrigerator in his laboratory and keep it next to his milk that he poured into his tea. But I remember spending many, uh, uh, several hours with him and his wife, and they'd been involved in nutrition research for years and just sitting there and just like picking his brains and getting information. Dr. Colin Campbell wasn't around in those days, or he was, but he wasn't around. He hadn't written any book like the China study. It really was a case of I read something in the newspaper, and then um, I saw something about the China study, and I phoned up Cornell University, and I said, can I speak to Dr. Colin Campbell, not realizing how huge that campus is. And I got him on the phone, and I said, I'm phoning from deep, deepest, darkest Africa here. 
not quite, but I was like shouting into the phone in case he couldn't hear because I was on a, a, a phone from South Africa. And he kind of just went, yeah. And I said, I've read about the study you're involved in. I need to know more. And he went, yeah. And he was like, I thought he would like say, wow, somebody's phoning from Africa, which was really naive of me. And the man had traveled all over the world, been to the Philippines and China. Somebody from Africa was just nothing. So I got eventually got hold of the book that they, he had at that point not written the China study, but I got hold of the original research book that had been published. It was this thick and this big. I mean, it was like 15 or 18 inches, not 18 inches, 12, 15 inches long and about 30 inches wide, centimeters, that's not 30 centimeters, 30 centimeters wide, 12 inches wide. And it was about three inches thick and cost me in 1991, it cost me 600 rand. That's probably more, it's about $600 in today's terms. Uh, anyway, I got the book and half of it was in Chinese and half was in English and I read the whole thing and right by the time I got to the end of that book, which took me a couple of years to get there, Dr. Colin Campbell had actually written a book called The China Study, which I encourage you all to read. And what I love about this man is he sells nothing. Things people like Dr. Caldwell Esselstein, Dr. Colin Campbell, they they sell nothing. There are many doctors in the health industry now or promoting natural health who have written books who do promote supplementation. So I needed to I needed to hear from people that were completely independent, not funded by a pharmaceutical company, not involved in a network marketing company. I needed to hear directly from the scientists. And around about that time, I started um, prescri uh, subscribing to a nutrition research journal, and they used to send me a magazine all the way from the United States every month, and I would dutifully file those away in files. And I would have shown them to you, but they got burnt in the fire two years ago. But today, they're known as Science Daily, and you can subscribe to them online. And But it's lots of stuff you have to wade through. It comes through at a frightening rate, sometimes two emails a day. You've just got to be able to speed read it. But it's totally changed now. I mean, you can just go online and type in benefits of vitamin C, and then you can put in side effects of vitamin C, and you'll get a million different papers that you could read on it and different articles. And the thing is to be able to separate them, separate what you're reading from commercial stuff, because it's just most of the stuff that's out there is very commercial. And so I recommend that you go to Google Scholar and look for actual scientific papers. And if you're not sure how to read them, you can email them to me, and I'll interpret them as best as I can. But here's the bottom line. Around the westernized countries, the United States, the UK, Australia, all the English-speaking countries, South Africa, we're the most westernized country in Africa. Our heart cancer has increased since I first wrote my book in the 1990s, 1991 when it came out. I was asked to speak at the Cancer Association, and I got the latest statistics from them. In those days, one out of every six men and one out of every seven women would get cancer in their lifetime. Today, 30 odd years later, in fact it's exactly 30 years later, that has risen to one out of every two men and one out of every three women will get cancer in their lifetime. Heart disease has just shot up and it's sitting at one out of every two people will get some form of heart disease. Diabetes is on the increase, in fact it's been called a pandemic. Uh, it seems weird to call anything a pandemic after the whole COVID debacle. Um, and if you look at how many people die from diabetes, it's way more of a pandemic than the COVID-19 um, situation is. Way more people die from it. It's And it affects a lot of small children as well. Um, children I have to, I've dealt with... Oh, Children of two that are diabetic, type 1 diabetics, have to be ex um, injected every single day, probably some of them five times a day. Um, whereas with COVID, ch children under the age of, oh, anybody under the age of 60 is very low risk, but children under the age of 18 or 20 are extremely low risk, unless they've got some form of previously existing comorbidity. In other words, if they've got cancer or they are diabetic, only then are they mildly at risk. So... We're dealing with diseases that are killing us at a frightening rate, but it's become so normal. I mean, it's, I read some years back in some research that said that the equivalent of one jumbo jet of human beings are dying every single day 
just in the United States of America from heart disease. Now, I know that rate has gone up, but if a jumbo jet was crashing every single day, killing all hundreds of people on board every single day, I think very few people would fly. But because it's become so normal, like, oh, my dad died, what did he die from? Cancer, heart disease, like those are the top two. Diabetes, as I say, is just behind that. Obesity is increasing. Autoimmune diseases are increasing. Gosh, we never used to hear about diseases like lupus and multiple sclerosis when we were growing up. And even when I started studying nutrition over 30 years ago, it was pretty rare, but it's becoming really common. Every other person has got another strange autoimmune disease. And they go to the doctor and they'll say, your body is attacking itself. It's confused. We need to give you steroid drugs. I am not putting doctors down. All I'm saying is that they don't study how to keep you healthy and how to get you healthy. What they study is medicine. What are your symptoms and how can we treat you with medicine and surgery? Very good if you're in a car accident or you've injured yourself and fallen and broken a leg, you need a doctor. You don't need a nutritionist or a, a, you know, a mango to eat. You, you need surgery. And that's very good. And they're very good at what they do in those fields. But when it comes to your daily health, because we're floundering out there, we really often just reach for supplements. And we're looking at westernized countries. It, it's estimated that at least 75% of people in most westernized countries, with the United States being at the top of that ladder, because they have more disposable income than most in most countries, 75% people are taking supplements on a daily basis. And some of them way more than one. Some people just take a multivitamin and they hope for the best. They just take whatever's on the supermarket shelves. They don't even look at it. If you go to any supermarket, there's always a, a section. And I know a company here in South Africa that is a multi-million rand company just selling supplements. They're in their third generation. And they call themselves a food company, but they don't make any food. It's just supplements. Um, and, and so supplement uh, intake has increased dramatically, but our health is decreasing. Our health is getting worse and the supplement intake is going up and yet people are incredibly attached to them. And I think the main reason is that we feel, and I know how I felt, like I don't really know how to treat my body because I, you know, as much as I did biology and science and anatomy and physiology at school, it was done in a very kind of cold way that that's, we're looking at the human body, you know, starting with a snail and then going to the life cycle of the frog and then going on to something a mammal and then going on to a human body and then snickering and giggling when we got to reproduction it's the only thing we were really interested as teenagers like what happens to the reproductive system and and then after that it was kind of nothing it's like it's like we may not even have learned that because most people just forget everything and they don't connect the dots they don't say but that's my body and we're not taught we taught the 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 actual physiology of the body. Well, here's your liver, and this is what it does, and there's your lungs, and that's what they do. But there's no connection made between how do you make your liver and your lungs and your heart work optimally? Nothing. Eat healthy food and exercise. Might have. You might have heard that. You just may have heard that. But what does eating healthy mean? To me, it meant eating yogurt and make your own yogurt with no preservatives in. Or have cheese because you need it for the calcium because that's what we were taught at school. So then when you discover that there's no that the calcium in cow's milk is actually so tied up in the phosphorus that you can't even use it and that you end up with a net loss of calcium from your bones, you start and when you find out that you're dairy intolerant, you've got all this mucus, you start taking calcium supplements. Okay, here's the problem. You've got a lot of companies promoting supplements, you've got a lot of famous people promoting supplements and telling you how wonderful they are. And at the same time, you've got huge amounts of studies, over five thousand studies just in the late 1990s at that point in time over 5,000 studies have been done on taking vitamin supplements and whether or not they benefited us now i kind of poo poo it if it was five studies 50 studies you take it a bit more seriously 500 studies i'd say okay this is serious stuff but 5,000 studies all showing categorically that calcium supplements do not benefit you at all on any level and in fact, if you look at the up-to-date research, this was known in the 1990s, it said it didn't benefit you. What the research today is saying is that taking calcium supplements actually causes a loss of calcium from your bones and teeth. I'm not kidding. This is not anything marketed by anybody who's selling you anything, okay? So we need to be looking at the actual science that's not connected to anything of financial gain.
really have to, and it's and it's tough. I mean, I belong to a, a, a company that used to sell vitamin supplements. Well, my main reason was if I if I could at least get it at the wholesale price, it would be cheaper, and maybe if I got five people to buy some, I might get enough money to pay for my own supplements. Except that never worked because the product never worked, and so nobody ever bought them, and then you end up just buying a garage full of stuff. So, what are the facts? Let's go through them so that I'm not just talking. Um, let's take a look. Let's start with A is for vitamin A. Um, here we have a study conducted in Sudan on 28,000 children where vitamin A deficiency and malnutrition are common. So these children needed extra nutrition. You'd think that they would respond really well to vitamin A. Children were given either a vitamin A supplement or a placebo. Placebo means it's just a tablet that looks like a vitamin A supplement, but it's just got white flour in it. Probably just got rice flour in it. Children were given a vitamin A supplement or a placebo for over 18 months. The supplements were found to be of no nutritional benefit at all. This was not some backstreet organization. This was published by the Department of Nutrition at Harvard University in the American Journal of Public Health. Let's take a look at vitamin B, D and bone density. And this is going back years. I mean, we, I'm talking about going back years. When I first started, I, just, I saw more and more and more of this research coming out. And you can actually go online and go to Google Scholar and type in vitamin D benefit to bone density. And then you've, you've got to make sure, because research can be funded by a company that is involved in supplementation, like a pharmaceutical company. So you've got to be looking at a company that, at a research that's not funded by anybody who has anything to gain, okay? So the annals of internal medicine show us, tell us that although vitamin D is required to use calcium to prevent osteoporosis, taking vitamin D in supplement form appears to result in a decrease in bone mass, mass or density. Bone density, however, appears to increase once the supplementation has discontinued. Go figure that one out. This has been around, this information has been around since the 1990s and it's more and more is coming out and your doctors are just jumping on the bandwagon and writing scripts for vitamin D. People are going into health shops, people are just ordering the products. They're not taking into account that vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, can actually damage your liver, your liver can't cope with it coming in in that form. You're not designed to actually eat vitamin D. You're designed to make it yourself. Okay? You have to make vitamin D. Your body's designed to make it. And all you need is about 15 to 20 minutes of natural light somewhere on your skin, your arms or legs or your face in the summer months, early morning or late afternoon for your cholesterol that you make for your liver to be transported to your cells. And what transports it is um, polyunsaturated fats, which one of our most reliable sources is flax oil. That's why I encourage people to take flax oil on a daily basis, make sure it's, it's nitrogen flushed so that it doesn't go rancid and that it's had no heating. Um, and nitrogen flushing, it keeps it on the shelf um, so that it doesn't go rancid. So that's the best type to take. So if you're taking flax oil, that's a great thing to take. I take mine in a capsule form because it's nitrogen flushed and it's got a two-year shelf life, okay? So you're taking your omega-3s. They have a lot of open bonds. This is the omega-3 molecules, but lots of open bonds with no carbon molecules attached here. So when you've got a lot of open bonds, I call it lots of seats on the bus, your body picks up the cholesterol that your liver makes. Your liver actually makes cholesterol because you need it for your brain. You need it for your central nervous system. It makes that myelin sheath around your nerves so you don't get multiple sclerosis. It's used to make all the hormones in your body or most of them. It's needed to make every cell membrane, and it is needed to convert for the sunlight to shine on the, get, react with the cholesterol in your skin and convert it into vitamin D, which is actually not a true vitamin, it's actually a hormone. And so we need to make it, and in that form, we can use it properly and fully. But if you're not getting the omega-3s in your diet and you're spending time in the sun, you're not going to have enough vitamin D. So you've got to eat properly. You've got to be... I'm knowing how your body works. It's, that's my mission in life, is to educate as many people as I can and reach at least a million people. And then if you all tell everybody else, it won't take me 25 years. I could do it in less. We've got to reach the whole world because people are really sick and they're not doing very well and they're just spending more and more money on supplements. One woman I met, this was 20-odd 20 20 odd years ago. She was then spending 3,000 rand, which is probably the equivalent 
in what you would spend in dollars. Not it's not converted into it in, in rand, but it's probably what you'd probably spend about a thousand dollars on supplements. It's a lot of money twenty years ago. Today, even today's terms, three thousand rand is a lot of money to spend on supplements. So there's a single woman. She was working. She was in her forties. She said, "I'm." I said, "Has any of this helped and improved your health?" She said, "No." But nothing's got worse, and I'm terrified that if I stop it, things will get worse. So she was just trapped, like taking these things. She was so convinced they'd work because many people had done a really good selling job on her. And supplement companies do, unfortunately. So we know that you need to go and spend time in sunlight. Now, there may not be any sun available in winter. And here's the amazing thing about the body. Your body can store vitamin D for anything from 11 to 18 months, some, some people even longer. So if you go through a dark winter where you're not having sun, you've actually got enough stored as long as you're getting natural light on your sun. And the most amazing thing about getting natural light on your sun, I mean natural light on your skin, is that you're also, you should also spend that time that you're outside with no sunglasses on, rather wear a hat or a cap. And then what happens is it, your, the UV rays enter the pupils of your eyes and actually trigger the pineal gland, which if you draw here and here, that little pineal gland regulates melatonin and serotonin. And melatonin people are taking as a supplement and you make it for free if you just get natural light. You just you could just sit in the veranda. You could sit in front of a, a window and open the window because UV rays don't go through glass. You could sit there for 15 or 20 minutes a day and you produce enough melatonin so that you would sleep properly at night. People are taking melatonin supplements when we make it for free. We're taking vitamin D when we make it for free. We also make serotonin, which is the feel-good neurotransmitter. And so because we're not making enough serotonin because we're not getting enough natural light, we go and take antidepressants. And antidepressants cause loss of nutrients from your body. We're going to look at some of the side effects of what medicine does. It's one probably one of the things that causes more loss of nutrients from your body than anything else. So if you're on medication, you need to eat really, really well, super well compared to everybody else because the medication you're on will make you lose a lot of nutrients. The fact that you're eating so well will help you get healthy and then you'll be able to take less and less of the medication and find like Mark and I did, that over 30 years ago, when we stopped taking any medication or refused to take the, like Mark, the blood pressure medication, our health has continued to improve. Now we're well into our 60s and we are in be the best health we've ever been in. We are fitter, stronger, healthier, and our brains are sharper than they've ever been in their life. I'm way smarter than I was at 20, which does come with age, but I have way more energy and way more strength as well. And I sleep better. So, stuff is for free. It's what's so amazing about your body. Your body will tell you what you need when you need it. If you're needing vitamin C, you'll go past the pineapple and you'll just start salivating or you'll crave orange juice. If you are um, needing essential fatty acids, you'll be craving fried foods. You'll want burgers and chips and and uh, anything fried and fatty. And then you know you're needing more essential fatty acids. You need to increase your amount of flax oil intake. Or like I take in my capsule, I, I take one called Amiga. And 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 this, and this it's just natural oil. I mean, if I had a seed press, I would press my own oils out every day. Except that you've got to put a lot of seeds in to press it out. So then I would make too much and I'd have to bottle it and I'd need a bottling plant. And, and I'm not into that, so I get it from somebody else. It's a convenience thing. And the most amazing thing is if there are any things you need to take for extra nutrients, they're things you can make yourself, all of them. And I'll tell you about that when we get to the end, okay? So vitamin D and bone density. Over 5,000 studies have shown that calcium from supplements doesn't help us. We now know that vitamin D actually makes your bone density worse when you're taking it in supplement form, and it improves when you stop the vitamin D and that you make it for free as long as you're getting omega-3s in your diet. People are going to ask about fish oil. Fish oil is highly processed. It's extracted from all the leftovers of the fish, all the innards, from the liver, from the eyes, from the intestines, and the skin. And what it's heated to high temperatures with chemical solvents, and it becomes very carcinogenic and rancid, and it's high in cholesterol from an animal, which is the wrong kind of cholesterol. Everybody goes on about my LDL and my HDL and my HDL is 
good and my LDL is bad or my LDL is bad and everybody gets confused about it. But at the end of the day, you need both HDL and LDL. What you don't need is animal, calf, animal cholesterol in your body because that's the stuff that clogs your arteries. But even your own cholesterol can to a certain extent. If you don't take in enough omega-3 fats from plant sources, you can't pick the cholesterol up and take it to the cells where you make vitamin D and make your brain work properly. So when that happens and it's hanging around in the arteries, it will start to clog the arteries as well. Although it's not because it's LDL and HDL, it's because you're not having essential fats in your diet, okay? Right, and it's not fish oil. Alrighty, where are we? Vitamin A, vitamin D. Right, let's go to antioxidants. Oh my word, the antioxidants, there are so many of them with so many amazing names like indoles and isothiocyanates and all these incredible things. When you look at the antioxidants, you think everybody thinks of the berries, and berries are so high in their anti cancer. And they're great. I mean, all, all fruit has got a lot of antioxidants. But in fact, cabbage is considered to have the most powerful antioxidants that protect you from cancer. So again, we looked at it. Science has proved results of 20 years of research involving more than 170,000 people who were considered high risk of developing gastrointestinal cancer. Antioxidant supplements investigated included vitamins A, vitamin C, vitamins E, as well as selenium in a total of 14 trials. These are big studies, okay? The conclusions are consistent with other reviews. There's no convincing evidence that the use of antioxidant supplements provides any health benefit with respect to cancer, said Eric Jacobs, senior epidemiologist in the American Cancer Society. People taking supplements died prematurely, the European researchers said. That was in the Lancet Journal of October 2004. So, you know, these things, these studies are stretched out over long periods of time. They're consistently saying the same thing, just more and more. And I'm, I can't, I'm not going to sit here all night reading the research, so I'm just reading the ones that are kind of succinct and to the point. Supplements, in whatever form they are, you're going to find out as we go along, are not ideal. What is ideal is food. You can use the nutrients that are in food fully and completely because your body is designed to do it. What supplements are is man's answer to a problem and probably the biggest problem is lack of income for the people that are making the supplements. So you can earn a lot of money making supplements. In fact, over the years I've been approached by two companies. One was to sell, promote fish oil, not sell it to promote fish oil. The other was for a range of supplements. Both companies said to me, if you endorse these supplements and you get behind it, you'll be able to drive a Rolls Royce within two years. I said, I don't actually have to think about it other than give me the research to tell me where your supplements are coming from, how they're made, where you got them from. They were all manufactured in the laboratory. Some of them said they were... Um, What's the word they use? It's going through a fermentation process to improve the absorption of it. Um, other people said that it was actually sourced from real fruits and vegetables. I found out the one company, they were actually taking the pulp that was left over from juice companies and dehydrating that pulp and putting it into ca um, capsules and calling it, well, I'm not going to tell you what it was called, but I call it juice minus, so you can guess what it's called. Um, so... And they said this was a proprietary method, but then I eventually found out what the proprietary method. Proprietary just means a secret. We're not going to tell you because if you find out, you'll be disappointed and you won't want our product, which was case said. My answer to these people was, I wouldn't sleep at night. My conscience would get me. I cannot do something just for money. It's nice to work hard and be rewarded financially for it when you're doing something that's worthwhile, but to just work for money, it's like being a prostitute. I wouldn't enjoy that at all. All right. All right, where are we? Next one. Right. Dr. Richard Sullivan of the Cancer Research in UK says, there are no shortcuts to prevent bowel cancer. If you're taking vitamins to protect yourself against the disease, you're wasting your money. What I have found out is that somewhere around 4 to 10% is what you can use from supplements. The other 90 to 96% is excreted via the kidneys, into the sewage system and you end up with 90 to 96% of your money, your hard-earned money being flushed into the sewage system and they strain your kidneys. You'll see as we go along some of the side effects of taking vitamin supplements. The most common one that is used is always vitamin C and it's the one that's considered the safest 
and vitamin C in supplement form causes gout, arthritis, stomach ulcers, osteoporosis. Um, what's the other one? Gout, arthritis, stomach ulcers, osteoporosis, and kidney stones. And some research that I've recently shown actually says it causes hardening of the arteries or arteriosclerosis. There is a study that, a couple of studies actually that shows it, and I'll, I'll read from it in a little while, okay? So no studies have been done on two to three generations of people. The studies that are done on supplements are usually for two years, which is the same amount of time that they test medication. Medicinal drugs are tested for a two-year period before they're released and into the marketplace. Um, same with vitamin supplements. It's two years. There are no controls to control vitamin supplements. I know the Food and Drug Administration in America doesn't control them. If any country that you look at, very few supplements are controlled. Some of them will look at them. It's a fascinating thing that they'll let you take vitamin C in the UK, but they won't let you take certain herbs for your digestive tract to work more efficiently because they see herbs as having a, a medicinal effect on some people. Um, and maybe that's their long history of being involved in medicinal herbs. But vitamin C can cause gout, arthritis, kidney stones, stomach ulcers, and hardening of the arteries. And yet you can take it. You can just go into any supermarket and take it off the shelf. Who knows? Maybe things will change in time to come. All right. Right. Uh, okay. The other thing about vitamin C, I actually jumped ahead, is that it uh, leaches calcium from the bones, destroys vitamin B12. Vitamin B, this is the safest supplement, by the way. It destroys vitamin B12 and is also thought to in, in, increase the estrogenic effect of the contraceptive pill. So there's more chance of you developing breast cancer because you know the estrogenic effect of the contraceptive pill is one of the factors that promotes breast cancer in women. And that's one of the topics that I've been asked by several people to please speak on. So in one of the upcoming webinars, we'll be speaking on breast cancer as well. So 100 to 150 milligrams per day is your recommended daily allowance. That's scientists have worked out what we need, somewhere around 160 to 150 milligrams a day which you would get about 100 milligrams in a glass, a glass, a 250 ml or a cup size glass of fresh orange juice. You'd get 100 ml milligrams of vitamin C. Vitamin C is in every single raw fruit or vegetable. There's less of it in apples and bananas, but there's still a little bit. There's lots in all your berries and your brightly colored fruit and vegetables. The brighter the color, the higher the level. So things like red berries and strawberries and... Um, um, pineapples, anything with a sharpness and a, and a bit of a bite, a little bit of a tang. The fruits that can get you your salivary glands kind of cramping slightly, things that are slightly sour, are usually very high in vitamin C. Tomatoes, red bell peppers, sweet red bell peppers, actually, they're usually very nice and sweet, okay? So you need 60 to 150 milligrams per day. If you were to eat, if you were to follow the five steps that we promote on our programs and in our books, um, which is eat at least a side plate of raw fruit or vegetables before every single meal. So just a side plate of any raw fruit or vegetables before you eat a meal. And your snacks in between your meals, before you eat the chocolate, have a handful of raisins. Before you go and have your potato chips, eat an avocado. If you were to just eat some raw fruit or vegetables before you had your snacks and before your meal, you would be getting about 500 milligrams of vitamin C a day if you were eating more fruit than vegetables. Um, and how do you know you're getting too much vitamin C when you are eating it? Very easily. Your tongue gets sore and sensitive and you don't feel like tomatoes and you don't want pineapples. Your body is telling you, we have enough. If you don't have enough, you'll crave it. How do you know you're getting enough in supplements? You don't. And some supplements today go up to 2,000 milligrams. And that's one of the reasons why they cause things like stomach ulcers because it irritates the lining of the stomach and can cause gout and arthritis and kidney stones, and can leach calcium and destroy vitamin B and can clog the arteries because it can cause damage, inflammatory response in supplement form. It's way more than what you need. If for any reason you take something that's got a bit of vitamin C in it, it should never be over like 150 milligrams. But even then, rather eat it because you're getting all the other nutrients with it, plus it's alkaline forming in your body, Whereas when you take it in supplement form, it leaves an acid residue in your bloodstream. All right, so let's go on to the next. A review of 60 studies on vitamin supplementation in cancer does not support the use of vitamin supplementation in the prevention or the cure of cancer. 
There's further studies that show that vitamin C does not prevent or cure cancer, and yet people insist on going have intravenously fed vitamin C, just vitamin C supplements straight into their bloodstream, and they're convinced that it destroys the cancer cell. But I have yet to see somebody recover doing that. The people that recover are the ones eating the most fruit and vegetables. They're the ones that recover, and they stay recovered. They carry on eating properly. It appears that the average vitamin user... And that's why we tend to see a bit more health amongst people that use vitamins. The average vitamin user tends to be Caucasian, which is of European ex descent, light-skinned, well-educated, affluent, a non-smoker, a light drinker of alcohol, likely to exercise more, eat four or more servings of fruit and vegetables daily, and eat a low-fat diet. And it is these factors, rather than the supplementation, that protects against degenerative disease such as cancer. So people that tend to be more careful with their diet and lifestyle are the ones that very often will go out and buy a variety of supplements because they're wanting to educate themselves and they learn about it like I did, read on the vitamin Bible and then I have all these supplements standing on our refrigerator. And that is published in the Cancer Prevention Research Program from the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center and that is going back to the 1990s. But there's more. But wait, there's more. Um, you, a lot of people today take chromium picnamate, which is a supplement to, to widely available and very popular amongst dieters and bodybuilders trying to have cut muscles. But there is some indication that says it can cause cancers of the upper respiratory tract and stomach and should actually be banned. And yet when you eat food that contains natural chromium picnamate, like green leaves, for example, then your body will respond very positively to that. There's a huge difference, and one of the big differences in the supplements is that vitamin C in a supplement form is just a molecule of vitamin C like that, it's circle, okay? But in a pineapple, it's attached to a carbon molecule. There's usually a bond, and there's a carbon molecule or several carbon molecules, and in that form, it's 100% usable. Whereas like this, in this form, it's 4 to 10% usable. Your poor old kidneys and your stomach have to deal with it and your bladder to try and get rid of it. And that's why you end up with stomach ulcers and kidney stones. Because your, your urinary tract is having to get rid of these supplements. And they're basically ending up. You can actually smell them in the toilet. And it was my husband that pointed it out because obviously men face, face where they're urinating. And he could smell it when he was taking supplements. He said, my urine smells just like supplements. And I said, oh, well, it just shows that you're getting enough then. That's what I was taught, but actually just peeing it straight in. And your urine, I mean, especially if there's B vitamins in it, goes kind of a luminous yellow color as well. Just peeing it straight in there. Alrighty, where are we? Next one. Some substances have irreversible harmful effects if taken for long periods at the highest supplemental dose. These include beta carotene, especially for smokers and people who've been exposed to asbestos. Nicotinic acid, zinc, and manganese especially for older people and phosphorus. So any of these substances is taken in supplemental. If you're taking beta carotene, if you're a smoker or have been exposed to asbestos, and if you're taking nicotinic acid, which is one of the B vitamins, zinc or manganese, um, and phosphorus, and especially in old, older people, um, can have irreversible side effects in some people. Some of those could be things like loss of the teeth and loss of bone density. The three substances which may have damaging short effects in supplement form, and it's simply because they've taken more than any other supplements. People are more likely to take these three supplements than anything else. It's vitamin C, calcium, and iron. Even though vitamin C is one of the safest supplements to take, it's the most taken one, so we see the most side effects. Vitamin C can trigger stomach problems such as diarrhea and flatulence and can make digestive problems worse. Similarly, high intakes of calcium supplements and iron may result in similar symptoms. So there you have it. Even taking iron supplements can cause problems. So even though vitamin C is water-soluble vitamin, recent studies have highlighted the possible danger of over-supplementing with just as a single nutrient. The University of Southern California reported that people taking 500 milligrams of vitamin C daily for a year showed progression in carotid wall thickness. I mentioned this earlier on, hardening of the arteries or arteriosclerosis. That was two and a half times greater than those who did not take a vitamin C supplement. Okay, so taking a vitamin C supplement can cause 
a two and a half times greater chance, a uh, greater formation of the thickness of the of your your arteries and your in your veins um, by taking vitamin C supplements. No evidence was found that elevated levels of vitamin C from food sources promote promoting arteriosclerosis. In other words, eating the food high in vitamin C didn't cause hardening of the arteries at all or arteriosclerosis, but taking it in supplement form did. All right, and that's which is 500 milligrams, and you're probably taking 1,000 or 2,000 milligrams. Another study recently reported at the American Cancer Society meeting concluded that large doses of vitamin C might be harmful to cancer patients because the vitamin may protect their tumors from radiation and chemotherapy treatments. How weird is that? Taking vitamin C actually protects the tumors from vitamin C. Again, obtaining vitamin C from foods does not pose this danger at all. These are things we don't know about unless we're actually reading documents. I mean, I could bore you to tears for copious amounts, which would be here until next year, just reading research and reading research. I'll try to get this down as short as possible. A 19-member panel prepared the latest information on dietary recommendations, and after looking at more than 5,000 studies, strongly condemned the use of dietary supplements maintaining there was no convincing evidence that calcium supplements were necessary to prevent arter um, osteoporosis. That was in the South African Medi Medical Journal. Uh, in the exercise physiology book, McCardle, Captain Cash, it says, once the enzyme systems that are catalyzed by specific vitamins are saturated, in other words, when you have enough, the excess vitamins in mega doses function as chemicals in the body. For example, megadoses of vitamin C raises the serum uric acid levels, precipitating gout in those predisposed. So once you reach your saturation, so it's not a case of if a little bit is good, more is even better. That's not the case at all. Once you get what you need, which is your recommended daily allowance, taking anything more than that, especially from your diet, doesn't make any sense. You should be taking it from your diet, but taking it in this tablet form, it's a tiny little amount that you need, but you really should be getting it from your food. Some Americans, Asians, and Sephardic Jews have a metabolic deficiency that can be activated um, to hemolytic anemia by excess vitamin C. So you may have a genetic condition, a, gen a me metabolic deficiency that can be activated by taking vitamin C in supplement form, and then you've actually got anemia. And yet vitamin C in food helps prevent anemia because it helps us to use the iron in fruit and vegetables. Megadoses of vitamin C destroys vitamin B12, irritates the bowels, and causes diarrhea. In case you've forgotten that, I said this earlier on. Excess intake of B12, B6 can produce liver disease and nerve damage. Excess B2 can impair vision. Excess nicotinic acid, which is also known as niacin or B3, inhibits or prevents the uptake, your body's ability to actually absorb and use essential fatty acids. So you're taking these supplements thinking you're helping yourself stop. So one thing you can stop straight away is vitamin supplements. You can just stop, okay? Get yourself a good juice extractor and extract some juices. I'll tell you which ones to do that now. Right. A sale of vitamin. This is from the um, Catch and Catch McCardle Exercise Physiology textbooks. The sale of vitamins is probably the highest drip off of our society today. The only effect would appear to be highly enriched sewage. In the China study, Dr. Colin Campbell says, as I have watched the interest in nutrient supplements explode over the past 20 to 30 years, it has become abundantly clear why such huge nutrient supplement industries have emerged. Huge profits are an excellent incentive. Dr. Colin Campbell, Professor Emeritus at Cornell University. He goes on to say, furthermore, consumers want to continue, and this is important, we buy it because we want it. We continue eating the customary foods and popping a few supplements, and it makes us feel better about potentially adverse health effects from our diet. So we'll just eat anything, and we think, oh, I'm taking my vitamin supplement. I'm okay. But you're not. You just need to look around at your family. I was watching something this evening. A woman was saying, my mother died of breast cancer. My sister got bladder cancer, my other sister got pancreatic cancer, and they all died. And then she decided to go to a fasting retreat. It was interesting. I didn't finish watching it, but it'd be interesting to see where she ends up. Uh, it's a good fasting retreat, through North Center. All right. 
Then there are other things that can affect our body, okay? There are vitamin and mineral destroyers, nitrites and nitrates, which are preservatives found in bacon, they're found in um, cold meats, they're found in processed meats, any processed foods, um, hamburgers and um, hot dog sausages contain them. What they do is they deplete our supplies of vitamin A, vitamin C, and vitamin E. All antioxidants that help the endocrine system, including the lungs and heart function and the immune system function more efficiently. So if you're eating things that contain this, which is processed meats, manufactured meats, um, this is one of the things that disturbs me about making fake meat because it's got the stuff in it as well, because it gives it a bit of a smoky taste. And what this does is it can affect the endocrine system, which is the system that controls every single thing in your body. You want to learn more about that? Um, the things that um, the program that I recommend you go on to is a 365. You learn a huge amount about your body. It's, it's, it's fantastic. And then amines also stops our body, depletes us of vitamin A and C or beta catene. And they buy products of cooked protein. So if you're cooking protein, you're going to destroy vitamin A and C. If you're eating cooked protein, you're going to eat a lot more, need a lot more raw food because you're destroying beta carotene and vitamin C. Then chlorine in tap water. You just open the tap and but chlorine in tap water destroys vitamin C, can deplete the body's vitamin C in a matter of minutes. In a matter of minutes, you're just drinking tap water and you think you're okay. Get a water filtration system and filter it. I'm not a, I do occasionally buy bottled water when I'm stuck, but it would be better off for you and for the environment because then you're not producing all this plastic. You get yourself your own bottle, filter your own water and use it like that. And you can just get activated charcoal. You boil it for 10 minutes and pop it into a glass jar of water and let it stand for eight hours or overnight and the next day you pour it off, you've got water. You don't need anything fancy or expensive. Right, um, chlorine from water, which is a sterilizing agent, can also destroy um, vitamin B12. And vitamin B12 is a very essential B vitamin made by friendly bacteria in our body that helps our brain and central nervous system function efficiently. It's essential to our body. And chlorine is one of the most common causes why 40% of meat eaters, fish eaters, pescatarians, vegetarians, and vegan, across the board, 40% of people around the world suffer from B12 deficiency. This is in countries where they consume tap water that has been chlorinated. That's why I filter it to get the chlorine out. Very important. You find in rural communities where there's no tap water, they may have a lot of parasites, but they don't have B12 deficiencies because they're not sterilizing their water and everything else. I know that we can end up with serious problems if we don't filter our water. There are some filters that you can filter literally straight from the river and filter it and drink it, and it's absolutely pure. All right, uh, what else have we got there? Uh, refined sugar and refined carbohydrates. Uh, uh, where are we? Refined sugar and refined carbohydrates destroy B vitamins in large quantities. That's B1, B2, B3, B6, and B12. And you can end up with a chemical imbalance of the brain because you don't have enough B vitamins and you can end up like I did, being bipolar. Since I changed my diet and stopped refined sugar, I also don't touch alcohol. I don't have any bipolar episodes <coughs> and I haven't for 30 years. <coughs> Sorry. Just a tickle in the back of my throat. <clears> throat. I need to learn to speak from my diaphragm better, not from the back of my throat. Right. Phytic acid, which is found in raw fish when you eat sushi, and it's found in wheat products, can bind B1 and calcium as well. Lead, hydrocarbon, sulfur dioxide, air pollution, ozone, nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, other gases deplete, which is responsible for mucous membrane maintenance as in the lungs, and so lungs can be affected. Your eyesight can also be affected. What I recommend is that you live as far out of the city as you possibly can. Because of lockdown and the whole COVID thing, many people are now working from home. All you need is a fast internet line and connection. So if you have the opportunity to work from a place further out in the city or at least live near a park that you can go and get walks, but have clean air in your house. You do get air purifiers that you can keep in your house and you put use some essential oils. It does tend to clean the air, not completely, but it can clean a lot of the pollution out. You shouldn't be near people that smoke. You shouldn't be smoking cigarettes either. 
Um, arsenic is found in, where are we? Arsenic is found in insecticides and destroys a member of the B vitamin complex called paraamino benzoic, and this can result in your hair graying at a younger age or your body being run down. So hair going gray, we'd actually keep our hair color naturally for longer if we lived outside of cities. I got out of the city too late. Um, but I still slowed my hair, my gray hair was slower in forming than my mother's was, for example. All right, cigarette smoke, including side stream smoke, destroys vitamin C in large quantities and removes calcium from the bones. All right, alcohol robs the body of B-complex and beta-carotene. In particular, the enzyme that converts vitamin A into what's called visual purple, purple, which helps you see at night. So you can find that your eyesight's affected and you can't drive at night at all. So be very aware of that. Also helps the body detoxify alcohol. Beta-carotene does. Alcohol consumption destroys vitamin B1. A lot of the other B vitamins, but that is in the long-term use, can result in DTs or hallucinatory nightmares. Um, stress can dis dis cause depletion of the B vitamins, all your vitamins and minerals, and a violent outburst of anger. Let's say, for example, somebody bumped into your car, your brand new car, you got out and you started screaming at them and then afterwards embarrassed. Your vitamin C reserves and B reserves can be just depleted in minutes from that violent outburst of anger. So very important that you go home, do some deep breathing exercise after apologizing for screaming and shouting. Just to calm you down, apologies work, and then breathe deeply, go home, and make sure you're eating lots and lots of raw fruits and vegetables to get those vitamin levels up again. All right, I need to move up on this. Okay, There's certain things in food, like tannin, which is found in tea, binds iron and can cause anemia. So if you have a meal and drink a cup of tea, even green tea contains tannin, you can end up with an iron deficiency. So stop the tea, anything with tannin. Okay, Oxalic acid contained in spinach, rhubarb, and beet greens, the leaves of the beets, can make calcium insoluble and unusable to the body, but only in that meal that you're eating it with. Eating it occasionally in small quantities is not going to cause huge problems. Spinach is not, it used to be my favorite food as a kid, but I actually find things like broccoli actually a lot nicer these days, and of course barley grass juice, which I drink. All right, so Caffeine found in coffees, teas, colas, chocolates, it's found in organic cacao, it's found in guarana, it's found in lots of supplements and energy drinks, depletes B1 and many, many other vitamins and minerals to a lesser degree. Right, and then all forms of medication, and I need to just, I've got a wonderful site here, I can send you the link if you want to look at it, I'll just read it out to you. It's called Pharmavite LLC, go to their website, but it's got a huge amount of information on what drugs do. Um, antacid, um, antacid medication for indigestion and for heartburn, for example, can cause a lot of the loss of vitamin B12, large quantities of it, can cause um, loss of magnesium as well. Um, and then antibiotics cause a loss of calcium, deplete your calcium, magnesium, potassium, B6, vitamin, all the B vitamins actually, um, B12 and vitamin K. They also, yeah, calcium and magnesium, there you go. Antidepressants deplete folic acids in large quantities. Um, antipsychotics de uh, destroy vitamin C and all the B vitamins as well. Um, most of your vitamins and minerals are affected by them. Anxiety medication prevents the absorption of calcium, um, vitamin D, and birth control supplements cause a loss of B vitamins, magnesium, folic acid. Uh, and the list goes on. Blood thinning medication, um, blood pressure medication. Most of these cause a, a, a loss of um, calcium, potassium, um, a lot of the alkaline forming minerals. So if we look at them, aspirin, for example, just something that contains aspirin, causes a deficiency in vitamin C, vitamin B complex, calcium, potassium, and iron due to one of the main reasons you lose the iron is due to gastrointestinal bleeding. All right, there are new chemical compounds are being found all the time, and this is one of the things that I learned. Um, Gosh, there's the most amazing, most amazing list of nutrients. And I, I read about
him in the past, but this one in particular I didn't know about, and maybe he did. But new chemical compounds are being found all the time, and you find them in food in the strangest places. This one in particular is found in the skin of fruit and vegetables. It's high in um, dried fruit that has contains no preservatives. It's also found in many herbs and spices like rosemary and thyme, and it's called ursolic acid, U-R, S-O-L-I-C. I was listening to Dr. William Lee a couple of days ago, and he mentioned ursolic acid. He said it's high in all dried fruit. You should eat dried fruit regularly. He didn't say with no preservatives. I would say no preservatives and no added sugar or anything else, okay? It's what is known as a pentacyclic tritopenoid, sorry. Pentacyclic, let me put my glasses on. Pentacyclic tritopenoid. And really what it is, it's a natural wax found in apples. It's found in the peels of fruit and herbs and spices and in dried fruit, and what it does is it actually destroys cancer cells and increases T-cell production, protects the body against multiple sclerosis, increases repair to damaged nerve cells, including sciatic nerves, increases muscle, brown fat, and reduces, this is great, increases muscle and increases brown fat and decreases white fat. White fat's what makes us obese, brown fat is the lean fat, that's what we need, and increases muscle tone. And it protects the heart against disease. So let's go back to what our grandmothers told us, is to eat an apple a day to keep the doctor away. But you could eat six apples a day. Today I had three apples. I sliced them up and ate them with my homemade peanut butter. And I was so full from that I haven't had supper and I don't want it. I'm just totally, I just, my body wanted apples today. Probably because I was going over my notes. Oh, I need apples. And I also ate our dried apples, which we dipped into honey and then rolled in cinnamon and almonds. And I ate a whole packet of those as well. So I really picked down on apples today. No wonder I didn't want supper. But these are just old-fashioned things that we've been eating. We're always looking for the latest fruit that's coming out and the latest supplement that's coming out. And yes, you might hear about these nutrients. There's a whole family of them that do different things. There's uh, betalinic acid, which you find in persimmons, and you find it in quince and in the bark of trees. It's in some supplements that are made from the barks of trees like Tribulus terrestrum, Muripiama. A lot of those contain things like butylinic acid, which is anti-cancer, antiviral. Um, moronic acid is found in, uh, where is it found? It's also found in a lot of fruit and vegetables. And then oleanolic acid, which is found, of, of course, in the olive leaf and in the olives, fresh olives and in olive oil. It's antiviral, anti-cancer. Uh, the butylinic acid, they've actually found that it, um, in October 2020, the Venezuelan Institute for Scientific Research announced claims that they discover a molecule named TR10, which is a highly effective antiviral against SARS-CoV-2, commonly known as COVID-19. A solic acid derivative claims to show a 100% inhibition of the virus replication in vitro, and that studies conducted so far show that the drug will not have any side effects on patients. Is that trying to make a drug out of it? Whereas if you just had some olive oil on your salad, you'd get it for free, okay? So eat olives, have your olive oil, extra virgin, not just any olive oil, don't touch pomace olive oil, that's highly heated and processed. Eat natural, unprocessed food, and you're going to get all these things. They're in the skins of apples, they're in dried fruit. Enjoy it and eat it, and your COVID-19 and all the other SARS COVID viruses will stay away from you, okay? Alrighty, food versus supplements. Consumption of carrots and beets is associated with a reduced risk of breast cancer. Eating these vegetables two or more times a week showed a significant reduced risk of breast cancer. You feel you need more carrots? I drink carrot juice every day, and I don't always want to juice it myself, so I have the dried variety. I drank, I have a dried, um, dried carrot juice called Just Carrots. It's just carrots that have been dried. It's very convenient. I don't have to stand there juicing carrots. And if I'm going to juice carrots, I want the organic ones out of my garden that are not always available. So I drink beet juice, I drink carrot juice, and I drink barley grass juice. Not barley grass powder made from the leaves and mixed with spirulina and alfalfa and all those things just cheapen it. I drink pure barley grass juice. If I could, I'd make it myself every morning, but I'd have to grow about five kilograms just to make for Mark and I every single morning. Um, and that is a bit hectic, and also cleaning the juicer of all the um, the beets as well is a lot of hard work. I do make it with fresh produce every now and again, but it's very convenient to use the powders. So if you're going to take any supplement, your best supplement would be to take get yourself a juice extractor and make the colours of a traffic light. Red, 
yellow or orange and red. That's what you need. That's what you need and a natural source of fat. So I would take, that's what I take. I take Omega every morning with my flax oil in it, perfectly balanced with Omega 6s, a little bit of sesame and sunflower and olive oil in there. And then I take, Mark and I take our barley light, which is just pure barley grass juice with pure carrot, carrot juice and beet juice. And that's what we have. And doing that for the last 30 years has resulted in us not having a doctor's bill due to ill health. Uh, and it's been amazing. We're in our late 60s, mid to late 60s, the two of us. And uh, as I said, we're in better condition than we were when we were 20. The only reason we ever go to a doctor is because of injury, which is doing things like picking up things that are too heavy and hurting your back. Because you're so strong, you see. You're so strong, you think you can pick up anything. All right, it's not certain whether the reduced risk is due to the carotenoids or other unknown substances. And this is an interesting thing. When you eat more carrots and spinach, it's not certain whether it's the carotenoids, because when they give people beta carotene to take in supplements, they actually get more cancer. But that's because it was a supplement and it wasn't um, it wasn't naturally in fruit and veg. But what we don't know is all the unknown phytonutrients. These things are called phytonutrients, these tetra tetracycline, uh, tri tritophenes, um, and the pentacyclic tritopinoids. They're all known for all these new things that they're discovering, moronic acid and aerosolic acid, and I can remember all their names. I will learn them. Oleanolic acid. These are phytonutrients that you find in plants. We don't know everything that's in there. You can't take all the known nutrients. You can't take every single known nutrient that's in a carrot with some fiber, mix it together, and get a carrot. It doesn't work. You've got to put a seed in the ground. Sunlight has to shine on it. Photosynthesis takes place through the green leaves, brings all the nutrients, converts them to organic structures so we can use them fully, and then you eat them, and then you don't get cancer. You cannot live on supplements. You can't live in just on supplements. Take the supplements out and live on fruit and vegetables and lots of raw, raw plants, fruit and vegetables, okay? All right, and in closing, the only way to get enough vitamins and minerals is to eat a predominantly raw, alkaline, salty diet, which means most of your food should be fresh and ideally raw fruit and vegetables. And you do that by eating raw fruit and vegetables before every single meal and before your snacks in between if you're going to eat them, okay? And then to properly combine your food, not mixing proteins and starches so you can absorb them fully and your digestive tract needs to work properly too. The point is taking supplements when your digestive tract not working properly because you're just mixing all foods together and you live on hand acid medication, which we know causes a loss of minerals and vitamins from the body. If you need to extra nutrients, rather use a juice extractor and do the three colors in the traffic light, green, yellow, or orange, and red. And I think of it for me, it's barley light, barley grass juice, Beet juice and carrot juice every day. All right. Um, out of all the green juices, I've looked at the nutritional benefits from it. I found that the body life is higher than all the others, and we see the best results in it every single time. And then I would take um, a flax oil supplement. I take Omega because it works the best for me. We've seen the best results in autistic children with it as well, and attention deficit children as well. And over and above that, I occasionally might take something like, uh, I'm working really hard and I'm under a lot of stress, I might take Multimaca, which has got roots, fruits and bark in, bark in it, it's perfectly balanced with plant, dried plants, and had it been proven to actually uh, help the adrenal glands function more efficiently. But basically it's fruit and vegetables, and it really shouldn't cost you that much at all. You should be spending less. If you just, if you were to use those three supplements, either make them yourself or use them yourself, I had several people telling me I was spending $800 a month on supplements and now I'm spending $150 a month on supplements. And that's just dry juices. It's convenient. Otherwise, as I say, get yourself a good quality juice extractor and make your own barley grass, carrots, and beet juice every day. Get yourself a oil press and press your own oils and you will have the best nutrients that you can get. I know I've gone over time. I know some people want to go off to the chrysalis training. But I just want to thank you all. Is there any questions that you haven't been able to answer? I know Mark has lived with me so long. He can answer all questions that I answer. Um, and he's been dutifully answering all of those. And thank you for that. I'd like to thank you for allowing me to be part of your journey into health. 
and encourage you that if you're needing any help, we have got several programs. We've got our 30-day detox, which is totally plant-based. It gets you geared up. Okay. And there's the 100 days to help. Um, 100 days to help. Do you want to write the question on the board there, Mark, or are you just going to tell me what they are? Okay. So there's the 30 days uh, detox. There's the 100 days to help. And then there's the 365. They're various programs. If you write to Claudia at info at wholeworldwell.com, she will give you the information. Otherwise, speak to the person that told you about the talk tonight. They should know about it as well. We have facilitators who are people that have done the courses who are happy to help you get onto the programs and help you get healthy and encourage you. Once a week, I meet with all of you to answer your questions, which I'm going to do now. I'm happy to carry on. If you need to leave, you're welcome to. The questions, fire away, Mark. Um, what do people do for vitamin B12 deficiency? What do people do for vitamin B12 deficiency? Eat properly is the number one thing. Number two, don't sterilize your digestive tract by drinking chlorinated water. Number three, make sure you have the friendly bacteria in your digestive tract. So I would take a very good quality intestinal bacteria, the best that contains only human bacteria, because we don't want cow bacteria or pig bacteria. We want human bacteria. It's called store of food. Ask your facilitator, they can tell you about that as well. Um, what it does is recolonizes your, your friendly bacteria, but you need to eat a lot of foods containing water-soluble fiber, and that's mainly found in fresh fruit, to a certain degree in some vegetables like avocados, but bananas are very high in them, apples are very high in them. Water-soluble fiber feeds your friendly bacteria. Things like the contraceptive pill, medication, um, chlorine in your drinking water can destroy B12. Um, and so it's not about the fact that you're going to suffer from a B12 deficiency. Only 40% of vegans, vegetarians, fish eaters, meat eaters, and chicken eaters suffer from B12 deficiency because they've sterilized their digestive tract. I would recommend you take flora food for at least a month and that you eat a high raw plant-based diet with a lot of fresh fruit in it. If you are averse to fruit and you prefer vegetables, I recommend you take something called Fit and Fiber, which contains um, it contains water soluble fiber with a natural peach peach flavor in it. It's very pleasant to drink. You can put it in your smoothies. It does tend to make you feel full, so you eat less too. But what it does do is it feeds your friendly bacteria. That's what it does. So you're taking the floral food, you're taking the fit and fiber, and it feeds it. That's the best way to get it right. And make sure there are no antibiotics. Certain antibiotics in foods like raw onion and garlic can destroy B12. And every single B12 deficient person that I have personally ever spoken to since I have been dealing with nutrition for more than 30 years, I've checked with every single one of them. The question I always ask is, do you eat raw onion and garlic? And every one of them have said they do. Raw onion and garlic contains natural antibiotic properties. I recommend that you remove those natural antibiotics. Stop taking them. And if you want to eat them, cook them extremely well. It's the one plant food that I recommend that you cook exceptionally well um, is your onion and garlic family and not to eat it raw. But it's very easy to correct. If you feel you do need to take a vitamin B12 supplement, the best that I know of is from a company called Forever Living, and they make the best vitamin B12 supplement. Um, the people that make the barley grass also make an energy sports drink, which is fantastic, called Peak Endurance, that also contains B12 in a good And you could actually drink that. But you shouldn't be living on B12 supplements for the rest of your life. It would be take it for a month with the flora food, make sure that you've got the natural fiber from fruit in your diet, or take the fit and fiber. And when you do that, your body makes vitamin B12 naturally. If you have a very, very stubborn problem, you may need to go through a period of fasting. It could be from one to three days fasting privately or going to a retreat and doing a seven to 10 day fast, but very often a one to three day fast on just water. Resting the digestive tract, and I've seen this countless times over the years. People have B12 deficiencies, they're anemic, they're so anemic, they're giving them blood transfusions, nothing's working. They go to a fast. I've sent people to Rachman for high hydro, there's a medical doctor there. They do a fast, and the one woman did a seven day fast, and when she, when she left, her B12 levels had gone from three, her hemoglobin levels, right up to 13. In the space of seven days of fasting, even she was blown away. She's like, but I'm not even eating anything. Where is it coming from? It's being released out of the cells where it's been stored 
put other cells out of the tissues, and then your body is able to absorb it and utilize it properly. And very often, we are getting enough nutrients, but we're just not using them efficiently because our digestive tract's a mess. So you've got to focus on getting your digestive tract healthy, which is what we do specifically on the 100 Days to Health, but in a lot more detail on the 365 My Year of Health. So you always ask your facilitator or Claudia, if info at Whole World Well will help you if you need to know more about that. But these programs are here. We've developed them to help you. I'm here to help you, and I don't miss it. I didn't miss it on the Easter weekend. I won't miss it in the December holidays. I will be here once a week to help you with your questions. We do a webinar like this for free to anybody once a month, or every four weeks, um, and we'll be letting you know. Um, if you are on one of our databases, we will let you know through the database when the next webinar is. What's the next question? Two questions, basically the same thing. Um, what do you recommend for people on desiccated thyroid meds for hyperthyroid? And how do you feel about thyroid problems and iodine? Okay. Thyroid problems is something I'm going to do the webinar a webinar on, and maybe, in fact, they wanted me to do it this week, but we decided to do supplements because there's more of a need. So I'm going to talk on that in four weeks' time in a lot of detail because it's a huge, huge issue. And if you begin, just to let you start off, if you begin to understand that your thyroid is part of a body system known as the endocrine system, that system controls everything, your appetite, your brain function, your energy, your metabolism, your heart function, your liver function, your kidney function. And I teach you all about the system on the 365 in a very, in layman's terms, it's easy for you to understand. You can print out the stuff and file it away and keep it. It's in short little bites so that it's easy for you to understand. We have had several people just on these programs. I mean, I've had dozens of people over the years. When they prepare to change their diet and their lifestyle and get natural light, we find the thyroid starts to work properly. The things that upset the thyroid are things like chronic stress, a high protein diet, lack of exercise and sunlight, caffeine, artificial sweeteners. There are a lot of things. I'm going to spend a lot of time on this in four weeks' time, so if you can hang in there, otherwise sign up for the 365, and then the next 30 days you'll learn a lot about that system. Um, but you'll learn even more in the next webinar that we have. But let me say, start exercising. Try and do it twice a day, building up five minutes a day, twice a day, and build up to eventually 30 to 45 minutes a day. That's I'm going to give you a little tip there, and I'm going to tell you to get all artificial sweeteners out of your diet. And at this point in time, you don't stop taking medication. You first get your diet and lifestyle right, and you slowly start to wean off. Your thyroid will never work properly as long as you're on medication. It's just folding its arms and saying, I don't have any work to do, so I'm not going to do it. And so you're getting desiccated thyroid, which is probably from a pig or a cow or a sheep. And it's not a human. And if it was human, you probably wouldn't touch it. But you can't just stop the medication. It takes most people anything from 3 to 12 months to come off it as the thyroid starts to work properly. Some people have just stopped it and sorted out their diet, but it's taken a good three to four months. It's not something you sort out overnight. That endocrine system needs help. On average, you can sort it out within three months to eight years. depends on how badly it's damaged, how much medication you've been on, how old you are, but more of that in four weeks' time. See you here. What else we got? Um, what do you think of... Iron supplements for a vegetarian. Vegetarians don't need iron supplements whatsoever. There's iron in every single fruit and veg, and the more raw it is and the darker the color, so if it's red or orange or green, it's very high in iron. We have been completely lied to, and I'm telling you lied to, by the industry that if you're a vegetarian, you're not getting enough iron, that you need to eat blood. That's basically what they're saying. You need heme iron. Heme iron means from blood. So we've been taught you need to have iron from blood. Well, then shouldn't we be drinking the blood of human beings? Aha, that's it. We actually are Dracula. Vampires, that's what we are. We should be drinking the blood of other humans because that's what's high in iron. That's ridiculous, okay? So we drink the blood or eat the blood in a pig piece of meat or a cow piece of meat or a chicken piece of meat or chicken livers. 
somehow where I remember having anemia because I used to bleed so heavily. The number one cause of anemia, firstly, let me put it this way. The number one deficiency disease amongst women and children in Western arts countries is iron deficiency anemia. In women, it's because women cons um, in Western arts countries tend to bleed very heavily. And the more blood you lose, the more anemic you are. The children are anemic because they consume dairy products. And dairy products block your body's ability to absorb iron and actually cause inflammation and gastrointestinal bleeding. So children are losing up to a teaspoon of blood a day because they have gastrointestinal bleeding from consuming dairy products. These are facts. I'm not making this stuff up, okay? I've got nothing to sell you in place of it. Really don't. You need to eat dark green leafy vegetables. You need to eat bright red vegetables, yellow vegetables. As long as there's vitamin C present in it, you will absorb all the iron in it. So what's called non-heme iron, we were told we can't absorb it efficiently, but you cannot absorb the iron from meat properly. Why would the number one deficiency disease amongst westernized people who eat the most meat in the world be iron deficiency anemia? I had it worst when I was eating meat. My iron levels are not, my hemoglobin levels used to hover under 11 when I was eating meat. When I stopped, my hemoglobin levels were 19. I looked at my blood test. I took them in February last year when I went to the hydro, and I'm like, oh, my word. And when I first started eating like this, I was always eating raisins and dark things. Raisins are very high in figs and just couldn't get enough. And now I eat one or two raisins and it's enough. I eat way less because what's happened is my nutrient levels in my cells have just gone up and up and up. And so now I eat a lot less. I don't crave things like I used to. I don't pig out in food like I used to. I sometimes dried figs, but... Even then, I get to my third sigh or body size and it's had enough and it doesn't need any more. And then to push it past, it goes to about a third or fourth sigh and it gives up. So I'll get to my third sigh and fix and say, okay, I've had enough. But mm. heme iron from blood, because you cook it, is very difficult for you to use. It's inorganic. It's from another animal. It's not what we need in our body. We need our iron that our body has taken from our food and has adapted for us to use fully and wholly. You will not have iron deficiency anemia. <coughs> Sorry. If your digestive tract is healthy. So you've got to focus on not mixing proteins and starches. Take flora food, get the bacteria in, take the herb, the Fresh fruit fiber or take your um, fit and fiber so that you feed your friendly bacteria. Get your digestive tract working properly by not mixing proteins and starches, which we focus on on the 100 days to health. We focus on it in week eight, it's chapter eight of my book, Perfect Health. Or we work on it in it's, um, the digestive tract, forms one of the 12 systems we cover in the 365 My Year of Health program. And we go into a lot of detail, nice, juicy, stuff but in a very in layman's terms and an easy little soundbite so you can understand what goes on. The whole idea of 365 is so that you understand your body and you not don't live in fear anymore and you have faith in your body. Your body is the miracle, not the iron supplement. If you're not absorbing iron, it's because you're either not eating the right form of iron or your digestive tract's a mess. Or you're bleeding very heavily or you're consuming dairy products. Number one cause a you know, dietary cause of anemia is dairy products. And the number one problem in women is they bleed very heavily. So get the bleeding slowing down, which happens when you eat a lot of raw fruit and vegetables and you reduce your animal food intake. And if it doesn't reduce enough, you may have to go completely vegan, which is what I had to do. It's the reason I became vegan. I went from seven heavy days, you, can know, you know why I was um, anemic. I actually realized now I must have been suffering from endometriosis because I was in terrible pain and I would be passing chunks of I thought it was miscarrying every month. I went from that to a two-day light period, no dark, smelly blood, just light colored, no pain, no discomfort, and my iron levels came up. And I went through menopause, no problems whatsoever. So you want to be healthy at all ages? Start eating properly. It's that, it's that, it's that right. You, we do not need iron supplements. They cause constipation. They cause diarrhea. They are very difficult to absorb because... We're not designed to just take it in a solid form like that. We're designed to take it in our food with all the other nutrients. You need vitamin C and vitamin E and calcium and magnesium and potassium all in the perfect balance if you find in our food to be able to use iron anyway. You can't just take it on its own. Your body can't use it. You're just defecating because it comes out in the bowels. 
your money straight into the toilet. Eat your dark green leafy vegetables, drink your green juice, and drink your beet juice as well, very high in iron. And lots of raw food with vitamin C. And on that subject of drinking freshly extracted juices, and somebody's asking um, if they did drink freshly ex extracted juices, they would get a surplus of vitamins. Um, would this be harmful uh, or would it be excreted into the soil? <coughs> No, it wouldn't be harmful, and in fact, it doesn't get excreted. It kind of gets saved by the body. Because it's natural and it's easy to use, your body can actually store it and release it later on. Like that woman started fasting, and then her cells started, or her tissue started to release the, 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 um, the iron. Can we just drink some water? If you drink too much juice, if you're taking in too many nutrients, you will gag. That's what happens. You actually gag. I've drunk too much um, carrot juice and actually felt nauseous afterwards. So I keep my glasses of juice to small glasses of juice. And I sip it slowly because what you do is you drink that juice, it's so delicious, you just down it like a shot. And it's fine if it's just a shot, but if it's a big glass of it, it's too much. So you need small glasses. I would say um, a half a cup to a cup. I would, I would have it at maximum like that. Unless you're on a juice fast, and then you're going to sip it slowly, and I would dilute it. <coughs> All right, so, um, but your body, when you're actually doing the right thing, you listen to your body, and there'll be days that you make juice, and you think, I don't feel like beet juice today. My body doesn't want it. I feel nauseous looking at it. And then I don't drink beet juice for a week, and then I want it again, and I have it. So although I have it, if I know I've got it to a place where I have half a teaspoon of beet juice and a teaspoon of um, carrot juice and two teaspoons of barley grass juice. But I find sometimes on Saturday or Sundays I just don't have any. So I don't have the amount of stress. Saturdays is our rest day, so there's no stress. So I just very often we don't make our, 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 our juice drink in the morning at all. We just lay it around and we'll eat the breakfast at lunchtime. Um, and we just switch off and have a lazy day. So if we, and some days we'll get up and we think, no, we both feel like our juices and then we'll have it. But listening to your body is more important than just every morning having a liter of juice and thinking that this is good, a liter is better. No, about a cupful to half a cup. Sip it slowly. If you don't feel like it, don't drink it. Listen to your body. That's the most important tool that you have. We've lost the art of listening to our body because we've been told when we were kids, oh, you're sick or you have a headache. Eat something. When you don't feel like eating because your throat is sore, so you get ice cream. Who doesn't want to eat ice cream when you're feeling sick? So we end up being taught not to listen to our bodies. We've got to learn how to listen to bodies again, which is one of the things I teach you how to do on our programs as well. Next question. Okay, what are your thoughts on supporting the immune system because of COVID? The best way to support your immune system because of COVID is a very th good thing to do to support your immune system, but you can't support it with supplements whatsoever. I mean, this list of vitamin D and vitamin C, you're just overloading your body, overloading your... There's no guarantee whatsoever of everything I've read. There's no, there's no benefit to people that have cancer. They actually get, get cancer from it. There's no evidence that it protects you. And if your immune system was working properly, you would destroy those cancer cells. So there is no evidence whatsoever, and everything that I've read on those supplements that people are taking, vitamin C, vitamin D, and what is the other one, selenium or zinc or something, there's no evidence whatsoever. Somebody just started it, probably somebody who has a supplement company. But there is loads of evidence to tell you that if you eat cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cabbage every single day, you are helping your immune system. If you eat dark green leafy vegetables and red fruit and vegetables, your immune system will be supported. Drinking your juices will support it. Eating raw food, that's why I encourage people on our programs to follow a 75 to 80% raw alkaline forming diet. When your diet is alkaline forming, your immune system is intact and works properly. Your energy levels increase by up to 30%. And if you have more than 30%, you have 30% extra energy in your body, that means your immune army has more energy to defend itself. One of the biggest problems with our bodies is that we actually don't have the energy to defend ourselves. It's not even an a nutrient thing, you just don't have the energy. And the reason for that is our diets are too acid-forming. We're eating a lot of processed foods, we're having caffeine in our diets, 
We're taking a lot of supplements that are acid forming in our diet, whereas if you're drinking fresh juices and eating fresh fruits and vegetables, they're all alkaline in your diet. And that's what I teach you on the program is how to get your diet to a 75, 80% alkaline forming diet and how to not mix protein starches that is very comfortable. Instead of eating a hamburger patty on the bread roll, you'll have a big jug mushroom or a veggie bed patty on it. You can have your your meat patty you can have on your on you can serve it with a salad. You don't have to have it on bread um, if you're still eating meat. If you are eating animal products, I encourage you to eat only organic because you don't want the hormones from the animals, which even if they're organic produced, they've still got their own hormones in them that will affect you. So you need an alkaline forming diet, which is what I teach you on the programs. The five basic steps that is in my book runs through all our programs. By the time you get to the end of when you've done 30, some people have done the 30 day detox and the 100 days to health, and now they're on 365. By the time you get to the end of 365, you're going to really trust your body. And if you don't, I'm going to tell you, go and do our nutrition course. Um, and then you can go on and study nutrition, and then you can actually use that and consult and help people and help your family around you. And you'll have all the actual science and be able to argue with another scientist or a doctor. You can have a conversation with the doctor once you've done our nutrition course. Because you're understanding, your, your training is you're learning from other doctors, you're learning from the top nutritional biochemists, you're watching videos, you're listening to the podcast, you're reading the notes, you're reading the books, you've got assignments to do after every single book that you've been reading or every single activity that you've done, you have assignments and you learn a lot. So honestly, at the end of the day, if you want to take it that far, we can help you, seriously. And I meet with the students on a regular basis as well. Um, and we work through the various books. I don't know what else I can do to help you, but 365 will teach you everything you need to know to trust your body. Your body is the miracle. There are no miracle cures. If there were, then everybody living in America would be perfectly healthy. There'd be no heart disease, no cancer, no diabetes, no multiple sclerosis, no mental disease, no bipolar, no just depression. Everybody would be in perfect, healthy and everybody would be peaceful and kind and loving and there'd be nobody fighting with anybody else. But there isn't. Supplement use has increased in thousands of percent and our health is deteriorating and getting worse. You have to stop yourself in your tracks and say, why? And somebody will say, because they haven't yet invented the right supplement. BS! I nearly said the whole word. Really, I get so angry. Your body is the miracle. There's nothing inanimate outside of the body that can come into it. You cannot take all those vitamin supplements and minerals and things and make it into an apple. You can't. You have to take a seed and plant it. You cannot reproduce life like it. And then when you eat the apple, you're eating something living, not something dead from a laboratory. Somebody selling to you. The average, I've been told, the average amount of profit margins on vitamin supplements the tablets, vitamin and mineral supplements, is more than 3,000%. And I can believe it. Because the amount that we need in a year will fit into a thimble. It would fit into the end of your thumb like that, okay? That's in a year. A tiny, tiny trace amount. And you're taking handfuls of capsules all day long. Just peeing it straight into the toilet, making somebody very wealthy. If that's what you want to do, go ahead and do it. But honestly, if you want to be healthy, I've been there, I've done it, I've got that t-shirt, and our health was a mess. Because when we started eating properly, started exercising, getting natural light, that's when your body starts to work properly. You can't make vitamin D unless you go into sun, and if you take it in supplements, it doesn't help. I read you the research. All right. So. Okay, last two questions. Calcium and osteoporosis? Yes. Magnesium and versus lead. Okay. Calcium, as I read to you, people that take calcium have a more loss of calcium from their diet from their bones than the ones that don't take it. If your diet is alkaline forming, you keep your calcium in your bones. Calcium is a very alkaline mineral, and it's one of the main minerals used to neutralize acid forming foods. Neutralize it's one of the reasons why medicines, so many of those medicines cause loss of calcium from the body is that medicines are very acid forming in the body and the calcium is removed from our jaw first and then from our bones and our teeth to neutralize the effect of medication and acid forming foods okay so the quickest way to keep your calcium in your bones is to change like that follow the five steps onto an alkaline 75 to 80 percent alkaline forming diet keeps your calcium in your bones and builds it up 
We've had people increase their bone density by 10% in one year just by going into a high alkaline forming diet. When you start to drink your green juices, for example, very, very high, your barley grass juice, I've calculated, it contains 22 times more usable calcium than you'll ever find in any dairy product. And that's the, one of the reasons I take it. It's like drinking the real milk, milk from the earth. That's why I drink it. It's so incredibly high in calcium, but it's all balanced with magnesium and potassium. You need magnesium, you need minerals, you get it from your food. If you take any magnesium as a supplement, for restless legs, you are going to lose calcium and potassium and other minerals from your body because it's too high. You don't know how much you need. You're just taking it. But if you're craving food and you go and you eat a food, fruit and vegetables and green leaves are very high in magnesium and potassium. So you'll crave certain things. The other day there was those long stem broccoli and avocado. I just craved it. I wanted to eat it. Then I didn't feel like it the next day. And it could have been I was craving magnesium. Who knows? end of the day you find magnesium in every single fruit and vegetable if your diet 75 to 80 percent fruit and vegetables it's alkaline forming you're getting enough calcium enough potassium enough magnesium you're getting everything you need you want to take magnesium put it in your bath water it'll make your muscles relax makes your body relax and that would be way better for you than anything else okay mark says i've answered all the questions so i thank you for your time so always an honor and a privilege to do what my best to help you get as well as you can. Just stop yourself and say, is this how I was designed? If I was living in a natural environment, what would I do? Where would I find supplements? Where would I find food? What kind of food would I find? Think of it that way. As I said to somebody once, if you were living in the Garden of Eden and you were craving something sweet, what would you eat? The only problem was I asked that question at a secretary's convention. There were 500 women there and a blonde woman in the front row in a deep voice. And I said, what would you eat in the Garden of Eden? She said, Adam. Well, the whole place just about fell apart with laughter. And it's true. It seems blondes do have more fun. They think very differently. I'm a brunette by nature, by birth. Um, I'm more practical. I start thinking about what what would you eat? I'm thinking dates and all. And whenever I'd ask that question, it's the brunettes who saying dates and apples and the blondes are saying, Adam. <laughs> Next time you're in the Garden of Eden and you're craving something sweet, climb the date tree. If you're needing calcium, you're going to eat nuts and seeds. They're incredibly high. Almonds are very, very high. So are all your nuts and seeds. But your green leafy vegetables contain more usable calcium than any other known food, more than milk, more than supplements, because it's more usable. And that's the difference. Remember that 4 to 10% is what you're able to use of most supplements. So if there's a 1,000 milligrams and you can use 10%, that makes it 100 milligrams. Whereas if you're drinking something that's got 100 milligrams, you can use 100% and it's not straining your kidneys, it's not straining your digestive tract, it's not causing inter interactions and causing loss of other minerals. Your body is designed to eat food. That's how it was designed. We have an incredibly smart designer who designed our amazing bodies. It was designed to eat food. You have been played on and encouraged to fear to take supplements. Okay. Trust your body, it's very smart. Goodbye, and I'll see you in four weeks' time if you're just coming to the webinars, or I will see you next week in some of the groups. 30 days on Monday nights, Tuesday nights is 100 days, Wednesday nights is 365, and Thursday night is facilitator or student training or this talk every, three, every four weeks. Thank you very much. I'm out of here.